Okay, so the golden ratio is what we're gonna be studying right now. And what the golden ratio is, is it is a mathematical ratio that had been implemented since ancient times. It is the underlying mathematics behind what we perceive to be beautiful. It is called phi, and here is the symbol right here that I'm hovering over. And its value, or one of the values, is 1.61803. This is truncated because it is an irrational number that goes on and on and on. Uh, but it was created by Phiadis. That's why it is called phi. And it was also studied by the Pythagoreans, which I know, you probably know the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared that's used for right triangles to find sides. But it fascinates society. Uh, it still is fascinating society and has been fascinating society for thousands of years. So I was talking about Phaedus, who was the creator of phi. He lived from 480 to 430 BC, and he's an all-around golden guy. And I, I'm making a joke because it is known as the golden ratio. By the way, uh, the name of the golden ratio changes throughout time. Sometimes it is called the divine proportion, and then it's called the golden ratio. But anyways, Phaedus was a sculptor, a painter, an architect. He was known for creating the statue of Zeus at Olympia. He was the architect of the Parthenon, and he also created Athena Parthenos. So here is what the Statue of Venus is, they think it looked like. It was huge, and it was based off the golden ratio, and it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It is no longer in existence. Uh, they don't know what happened. Usually with pieces like this, if you can't find them, it, it's the atrocities of war. So because it had so much gold in it, it probably was melted down to make other things. It was created with a wood frame and decorated with gold leafing and ivory. It was 42 feet tall. Uh, I know that through records, it said that a fire destroyed it in 500 AD. But some people claim that it wasn't destroyed then, but who knows? I have no idea. The other thing Phaedus did was the Statue of Athena. The Statue of Athena stood inside the Parthenon. It was around 40 feet tall, and the original was also destroyed in a fire. A copy exists and can be found in Greece. And by the way, if you're a fan of Nashville, Tennessee, they have a replica of the Parthenon on what it looked like in its glory days. Inside, it stands a, um, or at least I was told, stands a, a statue of Athena. Um, so she's 40 feet tall. That's, that's pretty big. And here is what the Parthenon looks like today. It is located in Athens, Greece. Uh, it is, you know, still standing, which is great. Um, and considering what it's gone through, it doesn't look bad. In fact, it still is a, a beautiful piece of architecture. So now we're going to look at the mathematics. Mathematically, what is the golden ratio? So Euclid, who is another Greek, uh, wrote up a book. And in book number six, uh, Proposition 30, he says that we can divide a line into its mean and extreme mean uh, extreme ratio. And I, I just found a little typo, guys, there. I know I'm supposed to have an X, uh, which we will simply call the golden ratio. So we take a line segment, AB, and we're gonna have a small section and a large section. So the small section is located from this red line over to the right. The large section is located from the red line over to the left of the line segment. So the small section is going to be a value of one, and the large section is going to be a value of G because we're just not giving it a name. Okay, we're, we're letting it be a variable. And then the large section, once again, would be G, and the total is going to be G plus one, because that's how I get the total length of AB. I add section G plus section one. Okay, so let's see that written out in uh, mathematical terms. 
So once again, we set up two ratios, uh, creating a proportion, small over large. So once again, one over G equals G over one plus G. Now, if you remember from mathematics, if we have a proportion, we can cross multiply and then solve. So G times G is G squared. One times one plus G is one plus G. Now the next step is to get all of your terms on one side and set it equal to zero. And the reason why is because this is quadratic in nat nature. Quadratic means that the leading power is two. So if I put all the variables on one side, I get G squared minus G minus one equals zero. At this point, I have to solve it. So what am I going to do? I am going to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says negative B plus or minus the square root of 4AC all over 2A will give me values. So when I use this quadratic formula, I get one plus or minus the square root of five over two. So I have two answers. I have one plus square root of five over two and one minus square root of five over two. And this is phi. So here's what I just said. One plus the square root of five over two, one minus the square root of five over two. So if you plug these values into your calculator, one plus the square root of five, and then divide by two, you're going to get 1.618033987. And it goes on and on and on. Once again, it's a rational number. And then if we take one minus square root of five over two, we get 0 0.618033987. Notice that their third decimal parts are identical. So it starts repeating right here, or actually all of it, right? 0 0.618033987, okay? So that's phi. So if we set this up, now we found uh, the value of G. So the total line segment is phi, which is 1.618. And remember, we got two values. Uh, G equals 0 0.618. And then we had the small side, which is 1. So that's how this works. That's what makes the golden ratio. So uh, Euclid, he called it the mean and extreme ratio. We call it the golden ratio, golden mean, or a golden section. Also, like I said, you'll see some ratings that say divine proportion. All right, so now that we know mathematically what the golden ratio is, now we're gonna see that you can create shapes based off the golden ratio. Here are uh, three shapes that we can look at, one of which is the golden rectangle. Here's a golden triangle and another golden triangle. Both of the triangles are isosceles in nature. Isosceles means two equal angles, two equal sides. See, two equal angles, two equal sides. And the golden rectangle, the values, when we divide uh, the length by the width, have to come out to be 1.618 or 0 0.618. So these are very impart important golden polygons uh, to know. And here's how you can construct a golden uh, rectangle. So you start with a square and we're gonna label it A, B, C, D. So remember all sides are of equal length with a square. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the midpoint of the base of the square. So the midpoint is uh, the mid distance or it's equal distance away from D and C. So we have point E here. We are then going to extend that line up to the upper left corner, which is point B, okay? I'm going to put a compass in here. So the compass center piece would be at E, the other one would be at B, and then I'm gonna extend that line downward. And that's how I get point F, because point F is the intersection with the baseline extended and that arc, okay? So now that we have that arc and that extension, I know where the golden rectangle is going to end. The base of the golden rectangle is going to be D to F. Now what we're going to do is take and put a perpendicular or a normal line to point F. So we have point F here, here's the base. So what I'm gonna do is put a perpendicular line, remember that makes a 90 degree angle, and extend it upwards. 
So we have uh, the base, which is F, and now I have the line up, okay? That's going to create the side, the right-hand side of the golden rectangle. My next step is to extend the line from A to B. So if I extend that and I hit that line F that I'm drawing, I will get a point G. So now I have the top of the rectangle and the right hand side. So the top of the triangle, or excuse me, the top of the rectangle is from A to G. And this is a golden rectangle. So that's how you would make your own. And once again, it exhibits the length divided by width and it'll come out to be 1.618. Okay, you can also make pentagons and if you look at a pentagon carefully, you'll notice that's a five-sided figure. And a regular pentagon means that all angles are equal. All interior angles are equal. So if we measure the side based off the length from one point to the other, side one point to the other, we're going to notice that these are values of phi. Notice the symbol here. So a pentagon is highly regarded as a golden shape uh, and it is seen to be the perfect shape according to the ancient Greeks because it is based off the golden ratio. And in fact, if you look at Washington, D.C., you'll notice there is a building there called the, the um, Pentagon. The Pentagon is a perfect regular pentagon based off of the golden ratio. A lot of things that were constructed in Washington, D.C. are based off of ancient Greek uh, ideas. Um, so this is just one example. And by the way, you'll notice that there's a star inscribed. You know when you got a star when you were young, and that's always a good thing? You got really excited about it. You can even think of stars on military uniforms. Like the more stars you have, the higher you, up, you are up in the military. Five-star general is a great example but a star was seen to be as the perfect shape, okay? The Pythagoreans, you know those ones that came up with the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They had a star inscribed on their palm of their hand that allowed them to have access into the meetings. So the Pythagoreans studied things like math, music, philosophy, and art. So they had a tattoo literally on the palm of their hand so uh, that's a pretty cool tattoo to get, I guess. Uh, inside of the perfect pentagon, we can see a golden triangle. This is an isosceles triangle, and we haven't gone over the golden spiral yet, but it also exhibits that as well. If you look and connect the endpoints together, but we'll talk about the golden spiral in a bit. But I want to show you that there are definitely golden triangles inscribed inside of that pentagon, once again reinforcing that the pentagon is a perfect shape according to the golden ratio. So here's that golden tri triangle again, showing the isosceles triangle 72, 72, 36. Okay, so here's an image of the Parthenon in Athens. Um, it is incredible. Uh, and it was built from 448 to 432 BC. And I want to show you how the golden ratio was used. So here's an image of it, just a closer image. And if we look at the top, which is called the pediment, this actually had the golden ratio utilized. So you're going to probably tell me, hey, but there's space up at the top. Yeah, well, what happened was the pediment showed the fight between the titans and the gods. And it was removed, unfortunately, at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, the pieces were literally sawed off and taken to the British gallery. So those no longer are on there, but the pediment, if it existed, uh, you can look up on YouTube or Google type in uh, Parthenon, Nashville, Tennessee, and you'll see what the pediment was supposed to look like, but it is a golden triangle. That's an isosceles golden triangle. Uh, the whole shape, if I, I like extend the lines around, we are going to see that it is inscribed in a perfect golden rectangle. Uh, and 
Then now we're going to kind of check out the Renaissance. So I'm going to start video number two on the Renaissance uh, because this video is now 15 minutes. So uh, if you look at part two, we're going to start right here on the Renaissance and we're going to talk about the School of Athens.